Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Saturday Hukalo webinar. My name is Karen Newman. I'm going to be hosting the webinar as well as channeling and guiding you today. Uh, in our room, we have Selesh, we have Reinhardt, Jesse, Dawn, and Christine, and then also the people in the YouTube chat. We're going to do something a little bit differently today. We're going to be focused on 2019 and the year to come, and also what we want to sort of leave in 2018. So we're going to do a little bit of a workshop today as opposed to a channeling, though we will do channeling, but it's going to be done within the confines of the, the subject matter. Um, if you are watching, please get a pen and paper because you're going to have a little bit of work to do um, by my instruction and, and this work. So uh, just also, too, before we really get going, I want to just let you know that next week on Friday, the 28th, the webinar will be not on Saturday, but Friday. And Rob Gothier is going to be here, and it's going to be at a special time. It's going to be at 3 p.m. EST which would be 12 p.m. California time, 8 p.m. UK time, and 9 p.m. Uh, GMT plus one Europe time. So that's because on Saturday, the channel panel will be happening. And that's a free event that everyone can watch. But we want to not have the uh, webinar competing with the channel panel. So Jim will be on the channel panel. I'll be on the channel panel. Sean Swanson, Rob Gothier, Kalina Angel, uh, Wendy Kennedy, and a lot of other people. Susie Byler. You just have to check the channel panel website. It's channel the channelpanel.com, so you can check it out. Also on the uh, Human Colony website, I will put a link for the channel panel so that everyone can watch it. So. All right, how's everybody doing? Good? You can feel free to unmute your mics and talk. But we're going to do a little bit of a, a workshop. Um, we're coming up, we've got about eight days, eight or nine days before the end of the year, between uh, 2018 and the switch over to 2019. We're going from a nine year, which is 2018, to 2019, which even though it's a nine, it's also a 10 year in numerology. So you have 2018, the, if you add the one and the eight, you get a nine, but you also have uh, from 2000, you have an 11. So you have an 11 year and a nine year in 2018. And then in 2019, you've got a, 10 year or, or one, it will reduce to one, which is always in the cycle of numerology of one to nine. So the nine is always the beginning of the next cycle and the one is the true beginning of the cycle. And then with it being 2000, then you have a three. So you go from a nine to a three year, which is quite interesting. It's sort of a big jump where you, when it was, uh, when it was 19, um, when it was 1919, it was a two year. So we're really coming into a hundred year cycle of a switch of a year. So that's, that's sort of interesting in itself. So in numerology, the nine is the ending of cycles, the ending and the summing up and the culmination of a lot of different cycles. And in 2018, it has been sort of this mad dash to get everything together so that it could be ready to move into a more positive and also a whole new cycle. Um, and we're not going to go from a one to a two. We're going to go from a one to a three, which is a trinity, which is a perfect sort of union. And that's much better than <laughs> the nine year that we're coming off of. This nine year, this 2018 nine year was uh, tumult tumult how do you say tumultuous tumultuous and thank you it was tumultuous but it was also the ending of so many things I don't know for a lot of people but it's the ending of of a cycle personally financially emotionally relationship wise government wise there's so many things that have sort of come to an end or coming to an end in this 2000. Uh, 18 year, which for me, I'm going to be happy to see the back of it. 
I, it was a very stressful year for me. I don't know if anyone else had a challenging 2018, but from what I understand uh, from a lot of people that they have, 2019 is is sort of a, how do you say, it's a smoothing of all of the old tumultuous energies, bringing them to rest. It's like if you have an earthquake and everything is shaking and there's dust in the air, finally, finally, finally that dust is settling. And 2018, this whole year was just being shaken and having the dust sort of settle and then being shaken and having it settle. 2019 is going to be a more harmonious, more perfect, more things coming into alignment year. Um, that is the one, the sort of new beginning, fresh new start, wide-eyed. You can sort of return to innocence without having ignorance. You can be innocent without being ignorant. And you can move into 2019 with sort of new hope, new expectation. I was thinking as I was walking outside today how I haven't really forgotten. I'm going to take my glasses off because they're reflecting. But I haven't really forgotten what it's like to be a child and how I used to like to walk on the sidewalk and on the, you know, on the edge of the sidewalk and, you know, have refreshment and, and, and be able to sort of play, be playful and expectant and hopeful at the beginning of every new year. Whereas last year it was just, I was sort of hopeful in the 2018 game and it just became very evident that not so much had changed and if anything, it had gotten a little bit more, uh, yeah, a little bit more violent, a little bit more uh, aggressive, a little bit more shaken, a little bit tumultuous is the only word that I can really think of. I was trying to find some better ones, but the whole time, it's just like we were just being sh shook and shook and shook. And now finally, 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 that's all going to settle. It's really going to settle. If it hasn't completely settled for you now, it's going to be in the next few days. And especially by the time we get into the first week of January and the first through the seventh, you're going to sort of maybe not even trust it that things are going better. You're going to sort of keep trying to be trying to look back to 2018. But believe me, eyes forward, move forward with hope and with positive outlooks because 2019, and this has all begun, this all began in 2000, I would say 2010, coming up to 2012. And then from 2012, whereas you had the sort of great shift where everything went all wonky and then it's continually gotten more and more wonky and more, uh, how do you say, unsure and things moving around. Finally, 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 we're moving into a period of, <sighs> so the collective sound for 2019 is <sighs> let your breath out. You can just breathe. Does anyone want to share in, in there? I, I will just say in the last 10 years from 2000, say 10 to 2019, have been, have been a wondrous time. I've had more adventures and more new experiences, but it's been the hardest time I can remember in my life. Every year, thinking that it was going to get a little bit better, a little easier, things were going to calm down. It just seemed to like rev up and get stronger and more, yeah, <clears throat> more. Blah. But I, I, I look back at it with fondness thinking, wow, I had experiences that I never had before. I <coughs> achieved things I never achieved before. I learned stuff about myself I never knew before. But I am happy to sort of move into a more harmonious time. So. Does anyone want to share their 2018 and/or up until 2018 time? How yeah. things been for you? Who's that? David. Hi, David. Hi. I'm gonna put my glasses on so I can see you. You just when you said that, you just like kind of reminded me that I did have a lot of adventures and, and they were pretty crazy and, and at times really rough. Yeah. So it just it led me back to the beginning of 2010. I went to Hawaii. Um, do you know Kahu Fred Sterling in the Sedona Journal? I've heard of it, but I don't know it. No. 
he's a medium up at the Honolulu Church of Light. So I moved from New Mexico to Hawaii to go on a sacred tour to see all the sacred sites on Hawaii. Okay. And women from all over the world. There was 23 of us that were there. We went to go see all the sites, do, do ceremonies. Yeah. And then uh, we all got baptized. And from that point, that was just like a, a big adventure. But it's, it was also hard, too, because I didn't really have much money. And I was like, ended up having no job and I was sleeping in a computer shop for three months on a massage table. And from that point I left Hawaii, went to Vegas. I was on crutches cause I had fell down some stairs and that was representing uh, the direction right. in my life. They had said the ankle represents direction. Right. So I went from Vegas and I made it to, uh, back to New Mexico. So I was stayed there for a while and, just remember having, uh, I just recently went back to New Mexico and it was really rough. And I just got back to New York uh, near Jim's recently about six months ago. And yeah, it was, it was pretty crazy. Like you said, sometimes a lot of adventure and really rough at times. And is it letting go now? Is it starting to ease? Um, kind of, I'm not sure yet. It's, yeah. it's hard to tell. It's hard to trust it too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I'm I can, working on making it better. Well, that's good. That's the important thing. Anyone else want to share their 2018 or from say 2010 to 2018? Their overall. I know for a lot of people, a lot of people woken up in that time. I will tell you that for me, uh, after 2013, I had uh, experience of things just slowly moving out, uh, a, a sort of transition of a lot of things. Like I'd always been very much in the fitness industry and in the food industry and slowly like that part of my life just sort of moving away and all my jobs in that area just sort of ended and my association with that went in a different direction and you know, I had always been um, yeah, so very focused on my job and who I was in, in my job and, and all of those things. And then all of a sudden when your job just kind of evaporates, you don't know anymore who you are in relationship to the rest of the, and the rest of yourself. And then also with moving into teaching more, you know, you start to think, what am I, what am I supposed to be doing? How am I supposed to be uh, presenting myself? But at the same time, I will say what's interesting is, is the internet really grabbed hold around 2013. That's where like it wasn't new anymore. People were very used to it. YouTube just exploded in that period of time. And, and so much stuff became about connecting through this sort of wireless or this, you know, virtual world with the digital world and that added an entirely different dimension to how we interact with people how we meet people um and and it it's been an important part of say my growth and i think for a lot of people's growth because you are in contact with people that you've never been in contact with before all over the world you know in real time and you're interacting with each other, you're sharing ideas, you're sharing mental ideas, psychic ideas. And it's and it's a it, it's sort of the oneness idea of being really connected. You know, there's still the separation of I know that I have this idea that I end here and you start over there, but really and truly being so plugged in to so many different people on a daily basis is a really new thing. You're not operating in just your small part of the world you're operating you know with the idea of oh i'm talking to this guy in england and i'm talking to this person in canada and then there's another person in new york and and you know in russia and in israel and you're all interacting together as a family you know constantly which is which is quite new for to to expand your boundaries. And I think that it has a lot to do with how we've been able to 
sort of integrate our energies because it's we we're not thinking of just how is this affecting me but you're 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 having this idea of how is this person living and this is a person i know and that connection is is in influencing you very very much so i i i just i'd like you to really think about um in this time and get out your pen and paper we're going to think about this last decade as we get ready even though 2019 is not the beginning of the next decade it's the end of this one and this is where everything that has wrapped up in 2018 starts to smooth down so that you can glide very easily into the next decade and that's what's really happening this time is going to be a much more harmonious time than say this last decade at least that's the prediction that's what i feel i uh, i think numerology and astrology will back me up that we're coming to the end of a very tumultuous that's the word for today tumultuous time so get out your pen and paper if you can uh, for the people on the youtube we're going to be doing some work and we're going to be looking at our 2018 and, and our 2019. So does everyone have their paper? David, give your paper. You don't have paper? Can you get some paper and a pen? Don, do you have your paper? I always have paper. <laughs> okay. All right. Christine, you have your paper? Perfect. All right. So for 2018, I want you to write down, you, we can do three to five things that you learned in 2018. Three to five things that, that you learned. Learned about yourself, about life, about your environment, whatever it is, things that stick out to you. What did you learn? I'll just give you another minute. We're writing down for 2018, three to five things that we learned in 2018. Positive or negative, doesn't matter. Jesse, are you writing? Um, I have uh, some, I'm, 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 I'm kind of just here. I have uh, okay. some. Uh, home stuff to deal with. Okay, all right. Oh, sure, Reinhardt, if you want to say that something for 2018. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I wanted only to say that um, it started in 2017. Mm. That was a big change for not knowing and knowing, you know, what I mean with this. And um, and the things for 2018, I write down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because. Um, well, in that period of time. Yeah. In that period of time, yeah. but this was only, you know, 17 was a very important year. Mm -hmm. It was some kind of um, don't know about it, and in the next half uh, knowing more than before. Okay, that's what I wanted to say. Well, 2017 was an eight year. And if you take an eight and you turn it on your side, it's the infinity symbol. Yeah. So 2017 was an infinity symbol, but it was also a one year. It was a new beginning year. Okay. So I, I will say, whereas people thought 2017 was going to sort of be the, the sort of the calming of the cycle, whenever you're dealing with, infinity and and you know sort of numbers like that it's so much 
it's almost too, it can almost be too much to integrate in that time. So whereas 2017 could have could have theoretically been a very calm year, it was a very, very uh, busy, busy, busy. Yeah. Uh, if, if you start, start to know, it is very um, busy and um, the volume you have to learn, it's right. quite large. Right. And, you need to believe then in the end. Yeah, and for so many people, even though people woke up, you know, say a lot of people were waking up in 2012 till now, there's been so much information coming. And, and I will say that it was sort of peaking around 2017. It was yeah. Peaking, but I don't think that it really slowed down in 2018. I think oh, it, sort of, it has changed. But it has changed. For, me, for yeah. me, it has changed. Yeah, yeah. So I must so, say to the better. Good. Okay, so yeah. that's what I wanted to say. Yeah, okay. for me, it, for me, it was 2017. Between 2017 and now, feels like one day, one very yeah, long. Yeah, it, it was um, day. Day was um, it went by with new, new knowledge and so on. So it, it went very fast. It can, it very, very fast, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's accelerated. It seems like it's like if you can if you can visualize, I've, I visualize always the week. I always see the week as being like, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, mm -hmm. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, starting off again, you know. And it feels like to me 2017 until right now has been – one long week mm -hmm. with many things happening, but it seemed like it seems like one period of time smushed together. Because I think all of 2017 went by, and I and I almost didn't notice the difference between a Monday and a Friday, and a January and a June. You know, it just seemed to go so fast, and that's continued. But uh, there are timelines also which had been moved together. So uh, sometimes uh, you feel as if um, you're somewhere else, you know? Yeah. And, um, and then, but not that it changed around your, around yourself. Right. But since we are connected via the internet, uh, right. you have a feeling that something is different uh, sometimes. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay, I will write down. I will write down. Things down. Did yeah. you write them down already? You wrote them down? You wrote your things down already? I have, yeah. Okay, good. All right. All right. Christine, did you write your things down? I can't tell if she did. Kathleen, did you write yours down? Yes, I did. Okay, good, Christine. Did you write yours down, Kathleen, or not? Uh, I'm I'm just participating participating because I'm uh, I'm going to work. Okay, all right. But it's uh, I'm I'm following. I'm with uh, with my mind and my heart with uh, what you do, guys. Yeah. Did you did you have the same experience of say 2000 between 2010 and now of it being just a very fast moving turbulent time of of big changes and. Um, you know. Um, from the background uh, I'm coming, um, we we want to erase our uh, history, so there's nothing we can um, be um, kept back uh, by. So you know, and 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 especially me, I'm like someone who really doesn't care about the past. Um, so I, I don't have I don't have too much memory of the past. Okay. But uh, but uh, not not in the sense that I don't have it. Is that I don't um, uh, I don't hold it with me. Okay. But if I were if I were to um, uh, compare the past and uh, compare with uh, who I am now and what I am now. Um, 
it's been a rough uh, 2000, very rough 2015, 2014 uh, years where I had to learn uh, a lot how to let go. Um, uh, 2016 was a, like a flat line year uh, where I, I learned I learned maybe I had to decide uh, to break a barrier mm. between that that meditation. You know, you meditate and really nothing happened. And you, you get meditate and really nothing happens. You know, so I had to decide uh, what do you do with this because nothing was really moving. Mm -hmm. um, 2017, um, and and it started in uh, in about in 2017. So after like 12 years of um, working with me, um, meditations and finding about me, like 12 years ago, I started to meditate because um, um, my my teachers like told me there's something there and there was a day I just boom from that day it's a daily meditation uh, I think I did more than 13 hours of meditations um, but so that's 12 years so despite that many hours I, I really started to change uh, in the last eight months like really change uh like um so that I can i can say the real change started in 2018 um um where i i decided okay i have to do something not only meditation really punch that barrier you know that that limit um so um as for acceleration Honestly, I think in the last six, seven months were most mind blowing. Where I had to tap into um, dimensions, like the, into the dimensions of the consciousness, but through my multidimensional awareness, because there's, there's different things. You have to, awareness is awareness, but it has it's it's multidimensional. So um, awareness it's it's like um, it's more than three D, more than four D, more than five D. Uh, it's a ever evolving um, self, mm -hmm. and consciousness um, consciousness. Consciousness is more my more like a connection with your with the God with your divine. So um, you know if you if if you want to um, if someone wants to get there, you have to let go of the of the personal history. Um, I think I I said um, uh, pretty much everything in regards to. Um, history and uh, the how fast things were going uh, this this last few years um as i said uh, i decided that i have to do something so uh since the last five six seven months maybe let's say 2018 was the most uh changing tapping into that multidimensionality mm -hmm. but it, as i said in, uh, multidimensionality what's the purpose of it it's that God communicates with you but it's very um, multidimensional if you don't have uh, yet that consciousness uh, multidimensional consciousness uh, um, if you don't tap into it God cannot communicate with you cannot you cannot let's say transform um, um what else it's is that is that um n uh, is that 
life that uh, presence where you don't exist uh, in time you exist now um, um did i cover pretty much everything i think so you made some okay, points uh, that i wrote down which i think are good to mm -hmm. pick up for everyone um, yeah um, you talked about letting go of the personal 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 history which is a very yes, important thing yeah yeah uh, letting go of the past uh, because you don't want to get attached to the past no. doesn't mean you will maybe um, forget it. You can remember the past, but it doesn't affect you. You're not. You don't have links with the past. You don't have energy links with the past, so nothing uh, uh, gets you back. Um, not nothing holds you back from advancing. Um, that's that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. All right. Well, it yeah. is important. It's important to understand sort of I, what I what I want to do for people is not to get them to hold on to their past. I want them to be able to look at it and sort of objectively see where they've come from, in order to sort yes. of give them a sort of a platform and a jumping off point into their current yes. now. With with yes, and, and realizing that this moment in time has been a significant uh, sculpting moment for so much, so many people of, of, you know, where you were say 10 years ago to now, for me, it's light years difference. Even though oh, I'm in the same house, even though yes. I'm, you know, in the same country, the world is so much different. I am so much different. Uh, the people yep. that are around me have changed and shifted in, in many different ways. Uh, there's certain people that are not around me anymore. There's certain new people that are very prevalent. Uh, and it yes, has had a definitely formative effect on myself, my environment, um, my person, you know, uh, in many, well, many different ways, me... my outlook. So, yeah, let me tell you something. If you don't change, or let's say, let's put it the other way if you change, you see different things. Yeah. You see the things different. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it's actually only you. It, it's, the world doesn't actually it's change. Only, it's only us. It's only us in our own environment. But at the same time, you know, I've got a you that I get to look to for another sort of perspective. And, and even though it's just me in my little world, I still have, I'm still playing the game that there's all these other people, that there's all this other stuff going on as well. Yes, you know? yes. You have little buttons on the outside world, which is, could be people, could be, could, can be the world. But the only uh, reference, it comes through your um, dimensionality. <laughs> Yeah. Through your dim dimensionality, you tap into your in inner world. You trust it. Uh, you you punch even more the veil of the of beliefs. You clean that 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 thing, um, and you you dare to go even more deeper, even more deeper, even more um, um, being into that being that yourself you go even deeper and you allow the you know transformation you have is not only to explore uh, consciousness it's only to, it's also to allow transformation it's because when you tap into 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 something that seems new you will see that god is allowing you to transform and you have to be able to allow it and to own it you have to be able to own the transformation, which is another. It's like a. It's like a click. Uh, it's like a. You, it's like you're holding your bed for a moment. You have a little emotion and thing there, and it it happens. Uh, you have to be a, um, accustomed to own the transformation, and it's not. It's it's, it's a bit complex uh, evolution. Um, Part of part of owning anything is letting go of the expectation of what you think anything is going to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know? don't and want to. You don't want to. Um, you don't want to 
expect or you don't want your mind to think that um, uh, okay this the evolution should be like this this is, is more accumulation and reformation it's actually the other way you have to unlearn everything yeah. evolution is it's uh, evolution it's uh, through consciousness and awareness awareness and focus and it's and and accepting the new you who you want to become or not you can't really know what you want to become but god will push you uh to to your evolution and well, uh, you have to be able to own it well you i'll i'll say it comes in stages because for me it's a lot yes, like yeah. it's like jonah and the whale you know like yes yeah, yeah it comes in stages it's 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 it's, a, it's an ever evolving thing uh, evolution and expanding yeah, this, and the story of jonah and the whale is jo god gave jonah some instruction about what Jonah was going to be doing with his life and Jonah was resistant to that instruction <laughs> and so everything in his life went wrong uh, and he lost everything and you know had all kinds of problems and eventually even he was swallowed by this whale and finally yeah. finally finally when he surrendered the whale you know threw him out spit him up and where he landed was exactly where, you know, God wanted him to be. And, you know, the lesson is supposed to be don't have resistance, just follow what you, you know, what you should believe. But I think the resistance part is also part of the learning. You learn to let go. You learn to give in. Yes, learn yes, yes, allow, yes. You know, yeah. you first, of, that you first at the beginning. At the beginning, uh, it's a process of learning, the letting go, but it has to be a natural, um, uh, it has to be a natural um, phenomenon. It, it actually, you know, as humans, you don't really need to learn anything. No. You need, I observe, I observe that, that you, there's some lessons you need to learn maybe a little bit, but uh they just work as a reminder, maybe uh, not even reminders work. Um, um, you said something uh, uh, that was worth um, exploring, um, which I don't remember now. Um, <laughs> it wasn't worth that worth it then. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, it was good. It was good point. Um, um, ah, okay. Uh, the you know you know if you tap into i i have sir observed this this like yesterday um exploring my pains and stuff i have observed that um if we 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 uh we spend enormous 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 amounts of energy uh into holding uh the past the past comes through expresses through pain, through uh, illnesses, through physical uh, body pains. This is the past. You don't want to keep that. No. If you call it images, um, the past, if you call it um, events, you can see them now in pain, in the physical pain. Um, you don't want to hold the past because it's going to kill you. It's going to make you sick. Is going to get you old uh, if you if you release this amount of um, of holding because when you hold that much power to maintain the past, um, it's actually a power that you can use it to be alive, uh, be healthy, uh, physical healthy. Um, um, you can regress the age your age you can um, you can um, heal of any sickness you have um, so I had the moment of consciousness when I realized that we spent millions and millions of like let's say Newtons <laughs> like force energy uh, yeah. power watts whatever uh, we spent tremendous amount of energy to hold 
stuff in place that we don't really need and the um we we have to clean that we have if, if you want to transform a little bit in this life you have to clean this those mountains of of uh, beliefs and stale energies blockages um there's a, a lot that we uh be, and because we have this divine power um this divine power we either use it to evolve and transform or to um be sick um or and hold on to this personal history um, um so we use really a, a lot of uh, amount of power uh, to keep us in place yeah. without without being aware i don't want to say with without us knowing because that's not true we know actually what we do uh, and um, you just ask ask everyone yourselves ask uh, questions uh, you can give actually answers to questions you never put ever in your life but if you put a question right now that you never ask yourself uh, you will actually uh, see uh, uh, an answer so this i don't think uh, nobody uh, uh, can be blamed that oh i don't know how to do that i think i think everyone can do that so um uh the past is uh, is a big chunk of uh, of thing that if we let go we can um retrieve some some good amounts of uh, personal power perfect thank you um what what we what we should think about or can think about or i invite you to think about is that your we're actually moving through time. And if you can, for one moment, think about that we're sort of on this sort of moving escalator, not really, but, you know, theoretically or figuratively or whatever, we're on this sort of moving escalator of time. And we have this ability now to sort of decide how we're going to approach the next period of time, this next moment, this, this 2019. And, and I'm saying it like started in a week, but I, 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 you can even start it right now, just, just to have a sort of target and have to have a mindset, a mindset change and a mindset approach to your life from say, this moment going forward. And one of the reasons I wanted you to write down some things that you learned in 2018 is because that's what I want you to bring with you into 2019. The, the disappointments, the failures, the pains, all of that stuff, we're going to leave it in 2018 and we're not going to look at it anymore for at least the coming period because 2019 is fresh, 2019 is new, it's a new beginning, it's a new start, it's a new possibility. Let's say from now, from, you know, today is a power day, it's a 22 day, that's a very powerful uh, time, it's a master number day. So from the 22 moment until the new one, you know, 0101 moment, the new beginning moment, it's about remembering what we want to bring with us even from the last decade and then leaving the rest in its place that it has a place its place is 2018 great it's a great school that you were in now you're graduating into another place and talking about i wanted to hit on the one thing that Catalin was talking about our multi-dimensional selves you know i don't think that this is an audience that I have to convince that you're multidimensional. I think that, that we all kind of, most of us accept that. If not, I'm here to tell you we're multidimensional. But just for the rest of us, we know we're multidimensional. 
And we're able now to see and perceive things in, in those many, many different layers and realizing how some, something affects us organically in our physical form, but also how it sort of spreads out into the universe and knowing that our level of, say, positivity, our level of awareness is not only good for me as a person, but it's good for the collective. It's good in moving humanity forward. So when we think about ourselves as multidimensional beings, we have a big responsibility, but also a huge power collectively to, to grow and to continue to expand and to move into the world as we want it to be. Hi, Elisa. Uh, did you know what we were doing? I was just going to ask you because you just came in a little while ago. Are you there? Are you able to unmute or not? Isa, I always say Elisa, but it's Isa. Are you there? Okay, I'll keep moving up with her. So for 2018, I wanted you to write down three to five things that you learned. And for 2019, I want you now to write down three to five things that you want to learn, that you want to achieve, that you want to bring into your life. You can write those down. So if you can, write down for 2019 three to five things that you want to learn and or achieve. Hi, Jeremiah. I didn't see you here earlier. Oh, you're Jeremiah. I didn't realize David was David. You're Jeremiah. Yeah, I'm David Jeremiah. Oh, is it, what is, what does it say? Does it's it say Jeremiah? Yeah, it says Jeremiah. Oh, oh, I added that because I needed a different email to to start working for someone. Ah, okay. 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 So, does everyone have their things in their mind of the things that they would like to achieve and or get? If you look at the two of them side by side, 2018 to 2019, most, most often, and, and I may be incorrect, but most often the 2019 goals are the antithesis of the 2018 things. The things that you learn versus the things that you want, they definitely are springboard into the next. Like for instance, uh, I wanted to learn to let go and in 2018 i learned really to let go of a lot of things and then for uh 2019 i want to basically continue that so even though the pain of letting learning to let go happened i've realized that it's a good thing and i want to continue it so if you look at what you if you've looked at the things that you've learned 2019 year goals are probably a springboard for many of those things. So think about those things. Think about what you want to achieve. Okay. And we're going to do a little meditation based on our 2018 into 2019 transition. How are you doing, Celeste? Oh, I've been fine. I've, I think Kathleen mentioned quite a bit of what uh, I've been through. Yeah, so it's from 2018, you because you had a big awakening year, didn't oh, you? It, yes, indeed. Um, from May 2018, what I found was that I needed to have more discipline especially related to my spiritual practices, mm -hmm. which I had none really, to be honest, before then. And that's gone into place now. And I follow it regimentally, so much so that it, it upsets some of my family members because I can't attend their functions. Um, the other big thing is what you were talking about is I've 
finally accepted to let other people you know, live and let go. Yeah. And yeah. I have started doing that. And it has been painful. It does trip me up still once every once in a while. And like you are in my next year, it's an ongoing process. And one of the big ones is accepting myself with all my blibs and blobs. Uh, because I've realized really there are none. Because these blibs and blobs are my learning lessons. That's what's um, propelling me forward, in other words. Uh, the heartaches or pains and tangs here and there. But they're actually propelling me forward by accepting them for what they are. And my physical life, I started taking it very seriously. I've become a vegetarian. Uh, I follow the medical medium diet. I'm doing my juicing, my detoxing. And what I've realized is that I had psoriasis uh, three months ago in my hands. Mm -hmm. And the doctors told me there's no cure for it. And I had no idea what psoriasis was then. And I said, of course, there's a cure. In the very next uh, few, the next few days, I heard Brad Johnson, the channel of Adronis, he mentioning uh, medical medium, and I went onto it, and bang! If right now the psoriasis has actually nearly disappeared from my hand, I I I don't have to worry because so I've realized that for me to talk about anything. I have to experience it. I cannot be a preacher, in other words. So I think one of my, I myself am uh, putting myself through challenges, I would call them, because there are no problems. These are challenges right. for me to overcome and experience. And if anyone wants to know about it, then I'm here. I can talk about my experience. So why don't you say my, one of the challenges that you put yourself through that has given you the greatest learning, and especially in this last year? And do you have a more of an understanding about what you needed to learn, why you needed to learn it? And and when and and also probably the last question will be: Are you more willing to go through the challenges now that come up for you, so that you you allow yourself to learn the lesson? I see. For me. What it is, actually, it's over since 2007 last year, but uh, was the b biggest one I threw was uh, alcohol. I had a massive alcohol challenge, yeah. which miraculously disappeared during the Reiki session. Uh, but that was 12 years ago. But uh, over the last five years, there's been nicotine. Mm -hmm. uh, that's gone. Alcohol's gone, obviously. Meat's gone. Um, so I don't miss it i don't uh, crave for it and i feel fantastic i absolutely feel fantastic and talking about friends i literally have just one friend left out of uh, from all the ones i had t from 10 years ago only one friend mm. and that's beautiful and to the internet has opened up but like you mentioned a vast field where i interact now with so many people um uh, like-minded and I don't feel alone yeah, that's the beauty yeah. of it I don't feel alone yeah yeah and challenges yes I I welcome all challenges because I know that whatever challenges that I will be facing will be placed by myself for me to overcome so that I can learn from that experience so do you think like that because what you're finding out is that you're, you, you really don't have to do anything. You can just be, and as long as you're sort of true to yourself, then things really flow. It's when you're fighting those things, you know? What was the reason before, I mean, it, just to not, but what, why do you think you chose drinking as opposed to meditation before? I... First, I can't put my finger on it, but what I can say is that I've always been, um, the expression we all know is a doormat for, always been a doormat. I could never say no to anybody. I always bend over backwards to help. So effectively, low self-esteem and low self-worth is what I had. 
Mm-hmm. And my coping mechanism was alcohol. And I realized that now in hindsight. So what I've done in the prevailing years is not to be a doormat. And I have stood for myself. It's, it's, it's been a gradual increment. Mm-hmm. But now it's come to so much so that I will speak my truth as long as I don't hurt uh, anyone physically or mentally. I will speak my truth. And it's alienated me quite a bit. Yes, uh, and people have dropped away from me, but that's fine because um, we're not vibrating at the same level. Uh, we all have our parts to follow, and a lot of people have just dropped away out of my life. Right. In fact, it has en- enriched my life even further more than uh, I could have <laughs> imagined. Right. So, so basically, you you learned that the self talk that you had wasn't true. Right? Yeah. You know, you started to remember more who you were and you realized that you didn't have to, you, there was nothing in fact wrong with you. So you weren't having to sort of drink to, to stop feeling bad about something that wasn't even true in the first place. Uh, yes, yes. Well, but my, actually, alcohol left me instantaneously during a Reiki healing by done by a lady and... By that before then, I was a, I was an atheist, uh, and cut a long story short, she told me that uh, someone who you're familiar with is uh, Ma. Uh, she she came uh, Kali came into the healing room with three attendants with her trishul, and ushered the the healer out of the room and summoned her back in after an hour, which is pretty long for a Reiki session. And uh, since that day, all craving, even I could be sitting in a bar with my favorite drink on the table and it doesn't bother me. I don't have the urge or the inclination to drink. Right. So that that was a miracle in, a, in its own. And as far as the other things, the uh, the nicotine, so heavy smoking, nicotine, meat, and everything. That was all self discipline because the more and more I started listening to like my okay, the most prominent ones that uh, for me have been uh, uh, Brad Johnson, uh, Rob Gauthier, then uh, Steve Rother, Lee Carroll, and a whole load of um, channels and entities I've listened to. And I've only taken in the beginning. It was very difficult because only it, it didn't make sense to me. So I only took bits and pieces which resonated with me and eventually I found that more and more resonated with me and from there I was I realized I had to give up smoking because I couldn't do any breathing exercises. Mm. Uh, meat, I realized the ingestion of cells of animals that have been mistreated actually we take that vibration on within our body. So it's been a realization through listening uh, to channelers and entities from other dimensions. So uh, time you're able to sort of refine and refine your desire, yeah. your desire, your desire to be in a higher vibration. You realize, realize who, who you That's right, and I now am working on literally um, channeling my higher self for my own guidance. Perfect. Yeah. So, and, yeah. That's no, already gone. No, no, I was just going to say so as your awareness grew, you started to slowly make changes that refined and refined. You, it, you know, you didn't set out to quit smoking. You quit smoking so you could meditate. You had a reason. Yes, that's exactly. Uh, yeah, you're right. I refined myself because. I used to think, what the, what am I going to do if I don't drink anymore? What am I going to do if I don't smoke anymore? And all these thoughts that normally come with addictions. Um, but it, yes, it was self-disciplined. It was because I wanted to achieve this goal of meditating and then now of channeling. So I said, oh my God, I better give up this uh, lovely beef and chicken I love because that's not helping me <laughs> raise my vibrations while I'm meditating. So yes, I have been refining myself. And yeah. also, especially now, going on the medical medium diet and everything is fantastic. Okay, what is the medical medium diet? I've never heard of that one. 
Uh, well, medical medium Anthony Williams, um, he's on YouTube. Um, it's to do with, he talks very about the e, EPV virus, uh, Epstein Barr virus, which is responsible for a lot of um, illnesses in our body. Okay. Uh, is, and he talks of, because he, in fact, is what Brad Johnson calls the um, Edward, Case, Edward Casey of. Uh, medicine so everything's channeled he, actually every all the material is channeled his books mm, okay. and the celery juice the first thing in the morning it helps to fight the virus uh, especially in the empty stomach in the morning and then i'm doing the detox uh, the liver detox which is one of the smoothies uh he's mentions and he's absolutely fantastic is because i've been using the celery juicing the detox uh, liver detox and also something what brett johnson has been teaching about cellular organ repair you go into theta state and then you start manipulating your cells talking to your cells and healing your cells uh doing all of this in conjunction and i've, I've seen i'm seeing results i have seen results and i'm already seeing more and more uh i find that also i'm more at peace with myself and hardly very rarely lose my temper very rarely lose my temper now right but unfortunately i did yesterday morning but, but i think it must have been the soul size yeah <laughs> yeah, it's all, so it's just, yeah so i mean i highly recommended anthony williams to people over on this especially in this webinar who are going to be listening to it because um it is out of this world it is out of this world for me. Okay, so it's Anthony Williams, the, the medium, medical, med medical, medical medium, medium diet. Anthony yeah. Williams, medical medium. Okay, check it out on YouTube. Mm. I think Elisa, um, I, I, I also, okay, anyway. Okay. All right, perfect. So, so for, so, so the things that you learned are the things that you're going to continue in 2019 now. Yeah. Yes, and also I want to uh, act, for activate my Kundalini, uh, further open my third eyes. Uh, so there's a lot I'm looking forward to. And channeling. And channeling is number one. I've been. Um, it's it's a challenge. <laughs> yeah, it, it, channeling is mostly about listening. Uh huh. I will. I will tell you. It's about listening, and then. You know, the information comes through, but really it's about being open and just listening. So, yeah. I'll take that on board. I, I have great, I have great, uh, how do you say it, certainty and uh, I have the good feeling that it will, it will happen for you. And it, especially in your, because I can imagine at 3 a.m. when you're meditating, you're getting a lot of information. Um. Well, there's no clutter. That's the beauty of it. There's very little clutter in my head. And I only just started since May. Mm -hmm. And um, yesterday was, today, this morning was absolutely brilliant. I, oh, it was as if I was gripped. My head was gripped and I was somewhere else. But then you see every once in a while, Salish puts his, peers his head in there and disturbs the peace and quiet. But I'm, the thing is, I'm getting there. Uh, it doesn't well. matter, you know. It's it's the cumulative effect, not so much that each individual day can also be, you know, spectacular. But you know, one one little time where you've got a monkey mind doesn't really matter. It's it's cumulative, and and I'll just say this: What do you know now that you didn't know, say, even in May? about yourself, about your meditation, about your connection? What's the one thing that sticks out for you? Um, I have a lot more belief in myself that, yes, if I put my mind to it in the sense of um, a pure intent is the word I'm looking for. Once I have pure intent, I know it's done. Right. Not, 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 not something like it can be done, but it's done. Right. And, uh, that's the one. And another one one thing I really want to do, Karen, you know, is what Ian is doing on, I think, on Fridays. Mm -hmm. 
I've been threatening to go on there for the last ever since he started. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely you should go. It's uh, on Fridays, just for everyone to know, we have uh, the Hukalo uh, channeling practice group. It's every Friday. You can find out, out about it on Facebook. You can join the uh, the Hukalo practice channeling group, and then there's always a link put up, and there's a a group of people that get together and they channel and it's for people who are just starting and they just need a safe place and a positive environment and an encouraging environment to do it but yeah definitely you shouldn't hold back yeah um, i will yeah i will sure. i will dive into it but yes <laughs> headlong yeah do you do you find that how i just want to because i just want to move on but i want to ask you one last question so you do your meditation what from three to five in the morning every day now or what it is i do it from three to four okay and then i spend uh 15 minutes 20 minutes in affirmations and mm -hmm. then i do cellular organ repair and I, then i uh, unfortunately life has to kick in at five o'clock i have to go to work <laughs> okay but how do you how does your day i mean how do you when you after you've meditated, how are you walking in your day? Are you oh 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 yes oh that's the biggest one oh yes okay what I do is I'm a lorry driver I deliver glass to contractors and everywhere, yeah. and I've realized that I don't get angry hardly ever. I do not lose my temper especially when things are not going your way. You know someone's supposed to be there a certain time they're not there delaying all the other rest of the deliveries. But now I just take it with the flow. What was meant to happen is happening at exactly the time it was meant to happen. Right. That's what's happening after after every day. I, I apart from one or two days, I'm perfectly okay. I mean, since May, been right. very good. So you can see things in the sort of the way that they out of how do you say unfold as being exactly the way they need to be. And yes. you can really appreciate them from that perspective of your your own alignment, and you can see things. Yes, that's what's happened. Um, it took a good two, three months before the re that realization came in, but now I know. I just sit there. People actually, uh, the regulars, they say to me, "Okay, you're going to lose it, now, aren't you? You're going to blow your top." I said, "What for? It makes no difference to me, right? Okay, it's going to get done anyway, regardless." And uh, I can see the changes in the customers I deal with, the clients I deal with. Right. Right? Their reaction to me and when I'm just sitting there like uh, Lord Buddha in the, your background over there, yeah? <laughs> so it's, it's, it's been a so that's fabulous. That's what meditation does for you. It, it, it centers you. And then everything else, you just sort of can uh, observe it. You can appreciate yeah. it as being the choice, the path the experience of the person that's experiencing it you can interact if you so choose if you feel driven to and realize that, that you will be in exactly the right place the right time the right well you always are but just the realization of it you know you're even when you're i'll just say this even when you're out of sorts and you're having a bad day you're exactly in the right place at the right time in that moment because it's matching your own vibration your reaction to it your experience of it is is your own choice you know how you how you how what you take away from it you can see it as getting angry or you can see it as a something happening to you or you can observe it as oh wow this is something happening to me how interesting you know, how, how interesting and if you can do that in the times where something is going maybe not well and you can still have that, you know, perspective of, wow, this is just another experience for me yes. to observe, it's, then, you, you know, you're in a good place. Yes, it deserted me yesterday morning, but that's fine. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, we, but see, the thing is, is that now you know, you had the experience of being out of the alignment, but now you know how exactly how to get back into the alignment. And oh then, yes, and the next time you can go see, wow, this same thing happened again, and I, I was in alignment this time. Huh? What a nice contrast to be able to measure against when I wasn't in alignment, when I wasn't in the right space. Yeah. Yes, true, very true. Silly, Jesse, did you can you move your mic, huh? Silly, for him. There we go. Good girl. Oh, I don't want 
I almost ejected him. I didn't mean to do that. Okay. <laughs> All right. And Anyone else want to share? Go ahead. No, you're not finished. Go okay, ahead. No. Thank you. I just one last thing. Um, you know, I I'm here nearly almost every week listening, but you know, I hardly ever have time to ask questions. Yeah, and I noticed that. It's only twice I've really participated. It's but it's both been with you. You know, there's a message there somewhere. I'll have to find that one. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to you again on uh, next uh, Saturday. Well, I, I actively call on people. That's why. Maybe that's why. You know. Yes, I think the other webinars they uh, they wait for you to ask the questions. I actively call on people. So if there's anyone also in the YouTube chat um, that wants to uh, make a comment, uh, we can read it out here. But from what I from what I want to where I want to go now is for 2019. I'd like to do a little meditation um, where we can start to lay the groundwork for how we want the year to be, how we want our time to be, how we want our awareness to be, and we can sort of take that with us into 2019. Sort of the, they call it in Dutch, the forbereiding, which means the preparation, and the for, for what's coming up. I didn't talk with Lana yet. Lana, do you have a microphone or not? Is she there? Lana. She's going by mechanical rock. No mic today. Okay. All right. And I didn't <laughs> and I didn't talk to Alsa. I, I I cannot say your name. I Elsa. I I know you. I call you Elisa, but it's not your name. Ilsa, do you have a mic or not? She's probably not going to answer. Probably like Her name is answer. Elsa. How do you say it? Elsa. 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 Do you have a mic? Can yes. You Hi. Hi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the first <laughs> syllable <laughs> rhymes <laughs> with um, <laughs> pale. Awesome. That's that's how my name is. Say it again. So the first syllable rhymes with pale, like the word pale. Pale, like Elsa. Yeah. All right. Perfect. It's, it's, I don't know why in my mind it's just because sometimes that little I looks like an L and that's why I get confused by your name. I'll never forget it. Elsa. <laughs> Elsa. So for you in 2018 to say this moving into this transition for 2019, what is it that you've learned and what is it that you want to move into for 2019? Um, well, I guess for me, I don't know whether it's rightly or wrongly. Everything tends There's to no focus. No rightly or wrongly. <laughs> well, everything tends to focus on healing my body because it's it's so noticeable for me. You know how ill I am. It's not something I can ignore. So I guess I focus on that. And this year has been, I think, the first year I've really found meditation to have an effect. I think before I was trying too hard. And now I, half the time I fall asleep, to be honest, but um, okay. I do, I find that I can get into a, a, a meditative state where I feel quite peaceful. Um, it, I don't have quite the same effect that, now I'm going to have problems with the name, is it Selesh? Selesh, he was just talking, he said he's become really peaceful throughout the day after meditating i haven't got that far yet i can f i can get really peaceful during the meditation but i can flip back to being not peaceful as soon as i've got up um so i think it's i would really like to um to be able to keep that state going you know so i'm more peaceful in the day because there are days i can do it and I think it makes a massive difference to mental and physical health. So I'm quite interested in that. And um, I, it's funny, actually, he mentioned the diet by the medical medium. That I, I actually tried that and it didn't suit me. So I suppose everyone's different. Mm. But um, I generally like work on all the practical things as well, like diet. So I guess the meditation and yeah, just achieving that state 
more consistently is what I'm really working on. Um, and not channeling so much as verbal channeling, more channeling energy into my body, you know, like, like doing Reiki and that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I think that's like what I'm looking to do. But you would say for you this year, your sort of biggest success and your biggest learning has been your meditation to be able to to have a sort of a positive effect. Yeah, I think it's the first time I've actually felt some kind of energy change in my body when I've gone into meditation. Um, actually, I've been using um, brain entrainment music, you know, where they have like binaural beats and, and that's been helpful. But it's, it's yeah, it's the first time that I've actually used it effectively, like meditation or anything like that and actually become peaceful as opposed to trying too hard and basically just giving myself a headache, trying not to think. You know? yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, so this has been the first time I've actually relaxed and found, you know, like um, um, the, the meditation's given, it's actually changed me a little bit, even if I can't consistently keep it going throughout the whole day. Um, so yeah that's like been quite a big change and so for 2019 what is it what are your sort of goals going forward i think i i want to carry that on and one of my big goals has actually been to see myself as healthy um i think i i am um, will often just see my body as a problem because of you know, I've been ill quite a long time. So it's more about actually seeing what I can be um, instead of focusing on what's going on right now um, and getting sort of stuck in that. So, I mean, not just from a health point of view, I guess from a point of view of life in general to actually see the potential of it instead of um, focusing too much on what's going on you know, in the in the moment that might be unwanted, or or also to see the the really good things that are happening right now. Um, Staying in the moment. Yes, and it's once you're really in the moment, it's like everything opens up, and there's all these poss. It's like anything is possible right now, but most of the time you're not in the moment because you're thinking about bad things that might happen or bad things that have happened or. Like once you just stop and just, I don't know, find that space um, where you, you're more like consciousness instead of being physical. And then suddenly it's like an enormous amount of space opens up. I'm not describing this very well. <laughs> no, you are describing it. And what it brings to mind is something that I, that I, I also have learned um, over this period of time. And I'll say, learning it over you know you think you learn something and then several years go by and then you realize you didn't learn it then but you're actually learning it now but the foundation of whatever you're learning started from before but you know, this 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 idea of staying in the moment staying in the in the now is about choosing what you want to what Celeste was saying what you want to react to, what you want to observe about a situation, because we're constantly in a, in a space where images, experiences, and things are paraded in front of our eyes, into our ears, you know, into our experience. And we can choose the distraction, which is what, keeps us from remembering that we are able to stay in the now moment and to really have this sort of presence, presence of mind. And when you're, when you're present, when you're really present, you realize what a wonder the world is. Even though it might be challenging, you still are in this sort of, you, 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 I would say being in the now moment and appreciation go hand in hand with each other. 
Because if you're really seeing the world and you're really seeing things, if you're really experiencing experiencing them, you can't help but be impressed by all of it. Yeah, that's you can't help but yeah. be like, wow, that's pretty, pretty freaking cool. Um, but um, yes, yes, Don, to answer your question um, in, in just a few moments. But um, when you're distracted, and we can choose to be distracted, then that's when you get, that's when you forget that we're not in control, ultimately. You know, one of the things that I was thinking when, um, when Celeste was talking about uh, addiction is that, isn't it interesting that in the middle of it, you don't understand what's happening, but when you have the perspective of it, he realized that even though he went through that thing, when he went to a Reiki healer, all of a sudden he didn't need to drink anymore. And the whole universe sort of conspired in those many ways to bring him to that one space. And so he was able to observe that by being on the outside of it and not being in, in the inside of it. And most of our life, most of our realization is when we're in the now moment. That's when we're really clear. That's when we are, I would say, channeling, in fact, down, getting the downloads, getting the information, getting the knowing, and being in the now. Because you have such a perspective as opposed to when you think that the monsters are real. And you think that this is all real happening to you as opposed to for you, for your own uh, observation I would say, I would go a little further to say maybe for your own entertainment, though, you know, that if you're willing to accept it, yeah, maybe it's all for our own entertainment. Um, but staying in the now moment is a, is a huge, beautiful, beautiful goal. If we can all stay in this now moment, we make clear decisions. We make clear choices. Things that are happening don't really affect us but we can affect them because of the way that we interact with them. Someone, is that you, you had an alarm? Yeah, sorry, it was. A, yeah. So <laughs> did you have anything else? Because I wanted to get every person because I wanna do a meditation and, and Theos is gonna do a quick channeling, a very short channeling, but this is more about everybody getting their own perspective. So Steve, are you there? Or the, uh, Hello? Elsa, did you have anything else or not? No, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. Steve, are you there? Can you hear me? We can definitely hear you. Um, okay. What the question was is that what did, what did you learn from 2018 and what do you want to learn or what, do you, what are your goals for 2019, basically? For me, it's more about interacting with the ego. And uh, even as of late, uh, I've had... I've had more conscious uh, interaction with said ego in relation to um, uh, interacting with others, how, how to feel about others, how to feel about being mistreated, um, and how to, how to process things from a different angle, from a higher perspective, and, uh, and, and to maintain composure, to maintain love uh, with, with, with negative people, with, with interactions that are negative. Um, and I, and I, I find myself like explaining to my ego how to perceive individuals, how to process interactions and how to continue to love, uh, people that I would have otherwise written off and, and been at odds with in the past. And it's been pretty powerful. I can, I can feel the, the ego more and more, uh, taking a backseat, uh, to, to our, to our higher dimensional, you know, reality. So that's really what I I see 2019 being a contrast to all the years previous and that I'm, I'm getting to a deeper understanding as to how to do that and to, uh, and, and to be at peace and, and, to, and to be a lot more resilient towards uh, that peace being disturbed, I guess is the best way to describe it. Do you find that it's now important? I, I, it's a sort of a trick question, but do you find that it's important 
for your peace not to be disturbed or for you to not think that your peace can be disturbed? Uh, I think my peace is going to be disturbed. It's, for me, it's more about just about observing the dis- disturbance and not and not uh, and not not attaching to it, letting it go, uh, letting it pass, and then and so I can re reachieve a uh, um, balance and peace, I guess. So I I don't I don't think it's uh, not ever being able to be disturbed, but rather just observing the negative emotion. Right. And, and and letting it go because yeah I don't to me it's not realistic to never be never be in, in a negative you know situation or a negative emotional state. Right. So, well, of course not. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's how we well you know for and, and I mean I guess there are those beings that are walking amongst us that you know just nothing nothing can shake them but I think that uh, I'm not there and I think a lot of us are not hundred percent there. But to, to come into that awareness that we do have this ability to choose and we do have this option to notice and to say, oh, okay, here's another opportunity for me in this very moment to choose my reaction and to sort of, if necessary, talk myself back into my alignment. Correct. You know, and, and, and think- to, yeah, go ahead. I think it's important to to have a dialogue with the ego because they, we we always talk about ego death. I'm not trying to kill my ego. I'm trying to 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 make him my team member. So I I envision him being in the back seat of my car and I'm in the driver's seat. But I need him and I want him around. Uh, we just need to to come to more amicable relationship and understand uh, understand what's 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 going to work against us and what is not going to work against us. Is that that's that's my understanding at least. Yeah. I, I, I think you know the ego is 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 there for a reason. It it didn't it didn't happen by chance. It's not a virus that you can you know get rid of with you know some soup and a in a Nyquil. <laughs> right. It's something that is part of us, and it's the balance of, like you said, you being in the driver's seat, the ego being in the back seat, and who you know. Who's really making the choices? The ego brings up some good points. The ego makes some observations and it has another perspective. Um, but but we can ultimately decide to what extent we're going to take that input the ego has there. Right. We still live in a world where self-preservation is is an important thing, you know, learning to not put our hand on the stove or to walk off the cliff or whatever, you know, having those little, those, those, that awareness, that's, you know, that awareness of what's good for my physical being. I I see the ego more as like a, yeah, looking out for me in my, in my physical form, making sure that I'm not in danger, that I am, able to navigate my world but i don't want the ego to dominate me so much so that i'm i become immobile or i become fearful of something that doesn't need to be feared you know i, right. I, want, the, I want the ego to to act as, as a as the as the preserver the sort of preserver of the of the physical that that it needs to be and not to be the dominant self. You know, the ego is also the driver, sometimes can be the driver um, as far as what we want to achieve. Sometimes it picks something as an ego goal, and it turns out to be a good thing for us, but at the same time, it can, can really turn around and become very negative. What do we want to achieve? Do we want to, you know, make a lot of money? Do we want to have a certain level of, I don't know, um, infamy or fame or something like that. The ego can be that thing that, that is driving you as well, but you don't want it to be too too much. I had someone come to me, I guess, a week or so ago and you know give me the big defense of the ego, that the ego was a great thing and that the ego should be really, really celebrated. And it, it gave me a little bit of a different perspective I don't know how much, I don't know how much the ego has to be celebrated. I'm, I'm kind of with you in the idea of let's, uh, 
<laughs> let's keep it in its uh, let's keep it in the back seat. You know, I I also I also feel it's important to have sympathy for the ego because I just observing my ego from a third person perspective, I realize that it's a lot of times just misled because it is in fear. Right, so it's, it's not in necessarily fear. right. Right. So, so I, I reassure my ego. I, I, I like self-talk all the time. I say, we're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. I'm going to take care of you. I yeah. like uh, Br- Brad Johnson's analogy of, of uh, seeing the ego as like a, um, a, 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 a excited, uh, a, a rabid cat and trying to, uh, instead of uh, put the cat down, trying to bring the cat into your lap so you can pet it until it purrs. <laughs> so it's, it's more about, um, it's more about soothing rather than, uh, than, than, than domineering, if you will, I think. You know, the ego, in fact, should be able to teach us empathy for another person, to understand why other people, most of the what other people react to us the way that they do, other, you know, that we react to other people the way that we do. Most of the time, our reactions, other people's reactions have very little to do with the actual situation at hand, but have everything to do with, who we think we are, who we think we should be, and where we are within that spectrum, you know. Right. A lot of the times getting angry or frustrated in the situation is because that experience is re-emphasizing to you something that you, a negative belief that you have about yourself, about what could happen to you, what is happening to you, what you deserve versus what you're getting, you know. Right. And, and so that's why the ego does need to be, like you said, maybe reassured. You know, the, you can almost look at the ego as that small, fearful child that didn't get enough of whatever it didn't get enough of. And in every moment when you feel like these feelings come up or these jealousies or these angers, it's your opportunity to go to the ego and say, you know what, it's okay. It's okay. I'm going to give you what you really need. And the thing that you think is happening to you is fear is, is not, it's only based in this idea of loss or lack or insufficiency or, or whatever, you know, it could be, but it's, it's a really, and I think that's a very nice way to think about that. that the ego needs to be brought Soothed. into the lap to purr right. like a cat. Right. Or, yeah. That's Brad Johnson. I didn't come up with that. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll thank Brad. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but it's a good thing. It's a good thing for to think of like that. I, I like that analogy. So for 2019, what is your what is your goal? Um, just to come more into the power that we have, and that's something you have to explain to the ego, because the ego never fully understands that we have this power that we were oblivious to before. And then, mm-hmm. then because of that power, we're going to be okay. So my, my goal really is to um, be able to, 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 to continue to view um, uh, the people and situations around me as, as, as a uh, other aspect of myself instead of an adversarial um, view. And, and so, so I can become more in harmony because I think the harmony is where all the good things come out of. Um, so that, that's just, yeah, for me, I don't have any, any concrete, like, you know, third density goals, I don't think. But I'm, I'm, I'm finding my interactions with people are improving because I'm able to have these dialogues with my ego and I'm understanding the ego's perspective better and how to explain things to the, to the ego and, uh, and, and, and just help, help it cooperate more. And that, that's, how, that's how we ascend and that's how everyone else uh, uh, is positively affected when they see us uh, acting differently than everyone else and, and being uh, more stable in our peace. Mm-hmm. Very good. Um, Ecclesiast uh, 888 says, uh, this is nice because this ties right into something that I wanted to share. Uh, It says, ethics and empathy combined reduces the mind level of superiority or inferiority based on physical appearance, social, financial status, race, religion, gender, and nationality, and the state of mind. I think that that's very true. And I, I... I, what I wanted to share and what I thought would be a very good thing to do, and we can do it as sort of the last meditation, uh, as well as setting our goals for 2019, is that years ago, um, I did an exercise with Theos, which is the beings that I 
am constantly interacting with. And my channeling has changed because so much of what I get now just comes out as opposed to actually channeling it through. But one of the things they did with me is I was in a, I was in a train and I went to a central station. And as I came out of the central station, you know, it was early in the morning, so all of these people were going to work. And if you've ever been part of mass transit, you know that like central station, every all the trains, you know, arrive and then everyone goes either rushing on to another train or to a subway or to a, a bus. And it's a very fast moving situation. And I was in a in a place where I was observing all of this sort of chaos and busyness around me and what theo said to me is they 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 said look at each person and realize that these are all aspects of you doing their own thing you know moving in their own direction but look at each individual as this unique expression that you couldn't be right now you've chosen to be this you've chosen this hair and these clothes and this physicality, but look at all the creativity around you of every being, of every person. And I saw for that moment people as creations, which is what I believe that they are, but I had a clarity about it. And I I saw, you know, one person with really short hair and you know, big earrings and nice clothes and very put together and sophisticated. And then I saw this other person who looked like they just rolled out of bed, you know, and they had frizzy hair and dirty clothes and, uh, you know, a lot of stuff that they were sort of lugging around. And, and I saw another person who was walking with the limp and I saw a person with a different color of skin and different physicality, you know, leaning over. I just saw the, the gamut of all of the creations that we all are. You know, we are all, when we talk about oneness, we're all, our origination point is all the same. And as we sort of trickle down into the world, you know, maybe like raindrops that still stay connected, we're all individual expressions coming from that one thing. So everyone is you on the highest level, but you can really, really look and see all of the amazing expressions that each individual person has. It's something that you could maybe never would have thought of in a million years. Like I would have never thought, okay, let me have, you know, uh, let me be part Asian and part black and have, you know, dreadlocks and a ring in my nose and all of, you know, I would have never thought of that as being my vehicle. But that being did, you know, and, and look at this guy who's really playing the part of the businessman. And you write down to the, you know, the cufflinks and the stiff shirt and he's walking upright and he's got his coffee in one hand, his cell phone, and he's really committed to that role. I mean, I was delighting in all of the expressions of everyone in their own individuality, realizing that that was all coming, that I was part of that, that I was that and that, that I was you and me, and I was all of these things. And I, I could, for very brief moments, shoot my awareness into their awareness and see the world through their eyes and their wonder of, you know, oh, there's a new coffee place here and oh, there's gum on my shoe and mm, I, I think I'm going to be late and oh, I hope I, you know, I hope I uh, get to see that girl that I've seen every, every few days. I mean, I got to, I got to have like in a very quick uh, way, I got to experience a lot of impressions coming through many different eyes and many different, uh, many different awarenesses. And it just gave me such a appreciation for creation. And I realized that the floor that I was walking on had been created by other beings who had been walking around at some point on the planet. And through their creativity, they had created this floor and this these walls and these buildings and these vehicles 
that, you know, these trains that we were taking and, you know, if you start to let it unfold and unfold, you just get to just marvel in every aspect of us that we are. And there's so much that we can't even see, like the atoms and the, the air molecules and the, all of the different things that we, we can't even really have the awareness of in the fullness because they're so unknowable really to us. But if you really start to think about all the things that we are and really get into this appreciation, how can you really judge any of it as being good or bad or right or wrong or necessary or unnecessary? It's all just this symphonic expression of the continuity of life and the continuity of being and all experience that is just moving together in this harmony and it's here for us and when i say us i mean the one being that we all are this oneness that we are it's all here in its magnificence to be relished and if you're in that now moment your ego doesn't know what is going on. Your ego is like, <laughs> yeah. there's no fear. The ego, the only thing the ego is doing at that moment is making sure you're not getting stepped on. And even if you do get stepped on, well, that's just another experience, you know. So if we can make that our goal in 2019 to have more of those moments of sheer wonder, sheer appreciation. We will have a fantastic, fantastic year. And if we can teach other people that, if we can teach our children that, then we start to have cumulatively a world of, of, of a giant appreciation society where we're not so caught up on is this person doing it right? Is this person doing it wrong? Why are they doing it? What is their motivation? We can just really appreciate it. And I'm going to say something now I would have never said two years ago. You know, all the stuff that has gone on in this, this world with all of the constant pushing and pulling has been an extraordinary teacher of allowing, of understanding that it has to express itself. It has to happen. All of it has to happen because it's the next possibility. It's the next, um, I would say, the, the next possibility of expression of being. So all of the things that have gone on in our world are only direct results of being the next logical step. No matter in what direction you're walking, they're the next logical step in the expression of all that is for that being, for that society, for that country, for that world. And it's all here for us to observe. There is so much happening. So now it's a matter of what do we want to focus on? What do we want to experience? You can do all of it. And if you can do it with the awareness of the appreciation, then you will never have a, I don't know why I'm here moment ever again. So that's what I wanted to say about that. That was just Theos a little bit. So what I would like to do is I'd like to do a meditation for laying the groundwork in this last, say, five minutes um, of laying the groundwork for 2019. Whatever your own personal goals are. And my own personal goal is just to be myself 
Um, I, I don't know, Celeste said it, that he, for the first time, has really started to sort of stand for himself and say yes and say no to what he wanted and what he didn't want to. I, I'm right there. I'd like that as well. I'd like to be more aware of my yeses and my nos, and be more conscious of them and to be make stronger choices. That's what I personally want, uh, to be more in the conscious moment at all times so that I can, uh, there you go, Paula. What Paula says, when one can hear without anger and other beliefs, you're almost there. And I would say, Paula, you've helped me with that this last year, so thank you very much. Um, that I, I wanna be in the moment and I wanna be appreciative of the moment, I wanna be observant of the moment and I wanna be allowing of the moment. That's my goal for 2019. How that manifests, well, it's just maybe uh, for me to find out. So, but but find your own reason. Find your own 2019 uh, goal, and we're gonna do a little meditation. Don, did you? We didn't go. We didn't ask you. But did you have anything you wanted to share or no? Well, nothing really. I just uh, I I did make a list. Yes. Yeah. Please go ahead. Let's take. We have we have good few minutes for you. Okay, well, um, for 2018, uh, the learned things were to uh, heal using touch by opening up my chakras and my palms, mm -hmm. um, become less shy and more direct uh, in my presentation of information on this forum, for one. Yeah, um, I agree. My, uh, let's see, the ability to collapse entire timelines back in November 28th, or 27th of this year, I did just that um, to some Wasa Draco ships that were approaching uh, some Earth ships in space. And I stalled them. I turned their power off, actually, from here. Just like I, I visualized the dial, and I just visualized dropping the their power level of those ships to zero. And then I... Uh, did some dramatic effects to their ships in that I repainted them from drab brown and black to uh, bright neon pink and plastered them with happy faces. Oh, that's nice. And after that, I got a whole mess of contacts from the SSP and uh, that group, <laughs> which was kind that, of funny. So that's awesome. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I. I Actually, Mother Nature told me that they were approaching, it, and so with that, that's why I did that. Okay. It's, not, it's too too close to Christmas. You guys aren't going to have party now, so I just said, forget it. It's like <laughs> anyway. kind of turning them into the Stay Puff Marshmallow Men or whatever. Oh, oh, oh yeah, just yeah. you know, they're they're only like uh, fourteen feet tall and five feet wide and weigh about three thousand pounds each. <laughs> they're they're cream puffs. Anyway. <laughs> Um, I wanted to go into a more positive timeline from 2018. Uh, I'm just going to create the reality uh, um, based on what affects me at the, in the moment. I'm not going to have any presuppositions for 2019. Uh, because it generally never happens that way. Yeah. And uh, it's just whatever the, the flow of the field of consciousness is flowing, uh, that's how it's going to develop. And my desires for that really don't fall into it. Um, it'll just be as, it un as the flower unfolds. Okay. Um, that's pretty well about it. Okay. I think. Well, I think that your sharings should increase in a public way, and uh, your shyness is not necessary. No. We, but I, I want to say Don is the one who's, who's you know, always um, handling the YouTube and helping me all the time um, with you know, keeping the, keeping the flow going. And, and so that's so appreciated. I want you to know you're very appreciated um, always and, and you're valued so much. And so anything that you have to share is always welcome. So you have a forum 
here yes. whenever you want it. Well, thank you very much. Well, you're welcome very much. Merry Christmas you and to you and to everyone just listening. Blessings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the ending announcements now um, because I think for the as we go out in the meditation, I, I hate to end a meditation with announcements. <laughs> Like, we'll get into a nice space and then I'll start doing commercials. So I'm going to do it now. Um, just so everyone knows, um, this is in, in effect the last webinar, Saturday webinar of the year. Um, next week, we will have the Saturday webinar on Friday and uh, it'll be at 3 p.m. EST and our guest will be Rob Gothier. Um, he'll be here, so it will be a free webinar. We'll open it up. I'll put the links on the Google pages, on the Facebook pages. Everyone is welcome. Uh, he's only going to be here for an hour, so if you're going to come in, you have questions, please have them ready, and we'll try to go boom, 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 boom really quick. Um, we might get him to stay a little longer, but I don't know. He's a very busy guy. So he'll be here next week, which will be great. And the reason that we're not having the webinar on Saturday is because the channel panel is on the 29th. It's free. Uh, it's a billion, jillion different channels, uh, some that we we know and we love, and others I haven't met yet, but I'm very excited. But the channels will be Rob Gothier, Kalina Angel, Sean Swanson, Daniel Scranton, Macrice Dominique, Dominique De La Cruz, Jim Charles, our own Jim Charles, Shelly Young, Susie Byler, who we've had on here, Lola Singer, uh, Kelly in the Raw, Kelly Coffee, I don't know who she is, Psychic Bob, Bob Hickman, Jeff Fasano, uh, Gita Rose, Daniel James, myself, Karen Newman, Robbie McKenzie, Jesse Starr, and someone we've talked about a lot today, Brad Johnson. So that's going to be on the 29th, starting at 2 p.m. Uh, I will also put that on the, it'll go in the Hukalo groups. It's on my Facebook. It's being shared around if you all haven't seen it. I'll also put it on the website, the Hukalo website, with the link. It's free this year. Uh, it's 24 hours of channeling with all these different channels. Uh, and then um, after 24 hours, then uh, it'll be cut off. So we wanted to make sure that the webinar wasn't going uh, so as to allow for everyone to watch 24 hours of stream channeling <laughs> starting on Saturday. Um, but but your favorite channels are there, so be sure to tune into the channel panel. Friday night, Rob Gothier at a unique time, 3 p.m. EST, uh, 12 p.m. West Coast, 8 p.m. UK, 9 p.m. my time, and uh, Dutch time and then Saturday the channel panel. So, okay, we've got that out of the way. Also, too, before we go, um, I just want to tell everyone that this has been a spectacular time hosting Saturday webinar every week. I've, I, it's been nice to be consistent, that to see everyone. I think we've built a wonderful family here. Everyone in the YouTube that watches, so nice to see you every week your reactions your questions um all of the different stuff people amaze me with their insights and their uh yeah the things that they've become aware of i hope this year has been an amazing year of growth for you and the 2019 that we can continue um, everyone that supports Human Colony, thank you so very much for the work that you do. You're volunteering, helping with the questions in the in the live chats. To Ian, who does the you know to, to, does the Friday channeling class. To Rob and to, not to Rob, but to uh, Jim and to um, Max, who are always here, and everyone else that attends. So thank you very much, everybody. Um, <laughs> that's just what I wanted to say. And we're going to do a quick meditation, several minutes. So I'm going to take my glasses off. So if you can, just put your feet on the ground. Put your shoulders back. Sit up in your chair. Sit in a nice position. Make sure that your, your throat, so that your breathing can be clear. It's in a nice straight line. Allow your consciousness to move to the center of your your forehead just right here above your nose, not with any stress on your face, not with any effort, but just to allow it gently to be there. 
put a little bit of a smile on your face because it's always better to have a, a happy expression. If you ever watched the movie Eat, Pray, Love, I think one of the things was that uh, he requested that uh, the woman meditate with smiling with her liver and with her lungs and with her heart, but also with your face, have a smile on your face because it's just joy starting here but going inside. And take a deep breath in through your nose and just allow it to come out through your mouth. Just like that. And breathe a deep breath in. Allow it to come out. Another deep breath in. Allow it to come out. And now we're going to just sound the sound of OM three times together. Deep breath in, smiling still in your face. Oh. Another breath in through the nose. Oh. One more time. Oh. So allow yourself to be in this centered place, realizing that our physical body is not truly representative of who we are, that we are expressing ourselves in this body, but truly we are all connected in spirit. And if you can imagine a line going from your body up into a center point in the universe, that everybody has that same connection into that center point, you realize that we are all just expressions of the divine in our many different faceted bodies and lives in our different countries and our different cities and our different houses and also in our different physical bodies. And that we've all chosen in a very unique way to have an experience that only we can have because we all chose to be born at different times. We all chose different families. We chose different physicalities, different talents, but it's all exactly what we've chosen. And it's all exactly what the divine had in mind for us expressing ourselves. So as we go forward into 2019, let's hold on to the awareness of the unique expression that we each are, and that we can hold on to the awareness that we are free to observe everything. We are free to dip our toe into whatever experience that we choose, and that it's exactly the right experience for us. And if we can experience it from that standpoint, with the awareness in the now moment, we will have a lot better appreciation than say we've had before. And even if we forget, we can bring ourselves back to our own alignment to realize that we had a forgetful moment and that was also okay. So moving forward into 2019, the prayer that we have when we pray to ourselves, to the highest knowing of ourselves, is to remind us that we are in fact divine, to remind us that our brother is ourself, to remind us that our brother is the expression that we did not choose, but that we can appreciate because of its uniqueness and of its value to the whole. 
and to not only appreciate our brother, but to appreciate ourselves in our own unique beingness. Let us look to the world with empathy and with compassion to realize that every person is either in a moment of knowing who they are or forgetting completely that they are in fact divine. When we have the opportunity, let's remind each other that we are all in this together. I wish you all a beautiful, beautiful 2019 as we take these last nine days, these 24 hour periods, each step that we take closer to the turning of the clock, the turning of the calendar, let us walk deeper and deeper into our own awareness, letting our light shine brighter so that we can have more important moments, important moments being those awareness moments, important moments being the moments where we choose to share love, important moments where we choose to share laughter, important moments where we choose to appreciate all that we are, all that is, and all that we can become. Namaste to everyone. Much love to you. We'll see you very soon next week in this next now. Much love to you and namaste.